At first glance, Penn State looks like a typical American campus. Here you'll find trim, modern buildings like the Hetzel Union Building, social and cultural center for some 15,000 students. Here are dormitories with just the right combination of good design and the warm, friendly touch of home. At Penn State, too, you'll see the traditional ivy-covered walls, without which a college just wouldn't be a college. The campus is rich in tradition, as any freshman will tell you as he bows to the old willow tree on the lawn. Yes, in many ways, a typical American campus. But if you think good looks is all there is to Penn State, you're in for a surprise. Because this is not a conventional university. It belongs to the people of Pennsylvania. And this means that along with its typical campus look, Penn State is continually showing another face to the outside world. The face of change. There are always signs of change to be found here because the university is always responding to the needs of the people who support it. Right now, there is a need of higher education for more and more youngsters. This means new classrooms, new libraries, new residence and recreation halls. It means change. The changes don't take long as a rule. You'd realize that if you could linger a while at one of the construction sites and watch a new campus building spring up. Here, for example, is the nuclear reactor at University Park, a combined research and training laboratory as it looked during construction. From start to finish in less than a year, Penn State is like that and always has been on the move. They say that the world's moving into the space age now, but whether that is so or not, these times certainly call for an exceptionally well-educated population and for universities that are ready to change to keep up with the changes going on all over the world. The times call for pioneering in higher education. When Abraham Lincoln signed the Land Grant Act in 1862, he gave form to a pioneering idea that the public has a responsibility to provide higher education for its young people. In 1863, Penn State took the words of that act as its credo and took them literally to promote liberal and practical education in the several pursuits and professions of life. A hundred years ago, you could look out of the windows of Old Maine and tell what the chief profession of Pennsylvanians was supposed to be. Nevertheless, if you looked in on one of Penn State's classrooms in those days, you would have discovered that students were being trained to be geologists, businessmen, teachers, and engineers. A class of Penn Staters in those days was as different in its hopes as it was in its dress. Old Maine changed many times in those early years. The university changed because it was responding to the needs of the people for a broad, liberal education. By 1900, this college in central Pennsylvania was attracting attention. Here was a state university that was turning out scholars as well as farmers, and what's more, was acknowledging that a scholar is what a scholar thinks, not what he wears. The early admission of women is typical of Penn State's pioneering in higher education. The pioneering continued into the 20th century, and there were many changes occurring on the campus in the years between 1900 and 1940. But the biggest change of all came after the Second World War, when Penn State expanded its walls and changed from a college into a university. Old Maine tells the story of Penn State's progress from a farmer's high school in 1855 to a university that is one of the 12 largest in the United States and is known around the world. Penn State grew because it was not afraid to take the lead. It is growing today for the same reason. Large as any university may be, it is no bigger and no stronger than its faculty. Penn State's professors are men and women who are themselves changing, keeping up with new ideas, whether they be in history, in nuclear physics, in theater arts, or in the teaching of foreign languages. They like to teach, these people. They like the experience of watching students grow. And under proper guidance, students do grow. 
The university helps the process among other ways through its counseling service. Counseling at Penn State today begins while the prospective student is still in high school, and it continues on till the time he graduates. What should I major in? What electives will I be allowed? Is studying for college any different from studying for high school? Will I have any dates? Thousands of questions, thousands of problems. Yet thanks to intensive counseling, the answers are being found. Can a student grow under this kind of teaching? The answers are not all and yet on television's role in higher education. But Penn State is taking the lead in experimenting with a new medium. In courses ranging from the liberal arts to the physical sciences, Penn State is extending high quality instruction to increasing numbers of students through television. Both student and teacher find the new medium challenging. All available evidence seems to indicate that television is a growing asset and that the new medium has a very definite place in the modern university. These are only some of the changes taking place in the classrooms at Penn State, but the biggest one of all, perhaps, is in the students themselves. They seem to feel the challenge of the time, to sense that education, in the last analysis, is up to them. There are changes going on here, too, and this, too, is Penn State. For being a people's college, Penn State has a responsibility to go out to the people, no matter where in Pennsylvania they live. The barnyard dog may not be in the mood for education at the moment, but most of the people of Pennsylvania are. To meet their needs, the university is developing what we call continuing education. If you ever want to see a serious group of students, look in sometime on a continuing education class in anthropology or modern art or American politics. You will see people from all walks of life going back to school with all the eagerness and attentiveness of freshmen. Sometimes the professor is a regular member of the university faculty. Sometimes a book is the basis of discussion, or a film from the audiovisual aids library on the main campus at University Park. Penn State is using every technique at its command to give the adult population of Pennsylvania a chance to grow. And for the younger generation, it is going one step further, bringing the university to Pennsylvania communities in the form of a system of Commonwealth campuses, one of the largest such systems anywhere. Thanks to this network of campuses, thousands of freshmen and sophomores to whom a higher education might otherwise have been denied are going to college after all, and in their own hometown. Of all the changes going on at Penn State, in some ways the most exciting are those being accomplished by means of research, all kinds of research. A plate of beans might not seem like a serious subject for a research project, but to nutritionists in Penn State's College of Home Economics, foods like this might contain the answer to such vital questions as the role of diet in heart disease. So whether it's with beans or liquid oxygen, with test tubes or tape recorders, research at Penn State is always going on. And it is exciting. To Penn State every year come scientists and scholars from all over the world to study, to do research, to keep themselves up to date. The university is keeping up to date too by constructing new facilities for the study of such subjects as crystallography linguistics, clinical psychology, nuclear physics, and many others. Some not even in existence when Penn State became a university in 1953. Perhaps the single most important reason for the many changes going on at Penn State today is the importance of science and the scientific outlook in modern life. The university is well aware that it must permit all of its faculty to go ahead at their own pace through research. Yes, in many ways, Penn State is a typical American university. 
plenty of handsome buildings, tradition, and picture postcard landscape that most universities would consider their most precious asset. Penn State is proud of its appearance, but prouder still when the dirt begins to fly. Because this is a sign that progress is taking place and that the university is once again playing its traditional role of pioneer in higher education. New classrooms, new laboratories, new dormitories. The face of this university is constantly being lifted, just as its academic sites are constantly being raised. Changes made necessary by the change and growth of state and nation. In resident education, Penn State is now getting ready for an anticipated tidal wave of students. Students who must be absorbed without any sacrifice of quality in the classroom. On its Commonwealth campuses, continuing education, bringing Penn State closer to the people. And in the laboratory, research. Research in every kind of problem under the sun, from the breeding of better hybrid corn to the development of better missile propellants, from new ways of using coal to sounder methods of teaching the Russian language. Research and training for research in everything from the hard sciences to the fine arts. Commencement Day speakers have long since stopped calling attention to the fact that commencement means beginning. But in this space age era, we can hardly afford to overlook this simple truth. Each year, Penn State sends thousands of graduates out onto the farms and into the factories, the schools and offices and laboratories of Pennsylvania. These young men and women are as well equipped for modern life as the resources of a large university can make them. We who stay behind can only hope that this is just the beginning and that the graduates of Penn State will continue to grow after they leave us.